Hey guys, here's Heiko. Welcome back to Heiko's Garage. Today we're actually in my garage. I've been pushing off a little project uh, for a little while. So just recently I posted a few videos uh, where I did a top end reseal on my BMW Airhead, my BMW R90-6. And um, I found a few things wrong during that process. I replaced one valve and a valve guide and I really thought that's it, fixed everything. But my, my bike before that top end reseal used to have one noisy valve train so one valve on this engine would make more noise than the rest and when i found one pitted intake valve and one loose valve guide and the valve guide was actually on the side where all the noise came from i thought i really found it and this is going to fix the problem now the engine is back together all is sealed up well nothing is leaking valves are adjusted engine runs fine but the noise is still there and uh, I don't want to keep riding it like this without finding out why one specific valve or at least one cylinder side is noisier than the other. And what we're going to do today is we're going to put a camera here in front of this. We're going to take the valve cover off and we're going to run it without valve cover. It's a little bit of a messy process. You're going to have some oil being flung out by the valve train. Um, but uh, that way you can actually take a look at the moving parts and uh, maybe even identify where the noise is coming from. I, I can't explain it. I, I checked all the uh, play in the valve guides so to make sure that the valves are not excessively loose in the valve guides. Um, I inspected all the rockers. They uh, have new bearings and even new rocker shafts. I did that in a previous project, but um, new bearings and new rocker shafts, they are maybe half a year old. Um, I even have in the past tried to swap a rocker from one side to the other because um, the exhaust valve rocker on the right side cylinder is the same as the intake rocker on the left side. So I swapped them around and I thought maybe the noise is going to move with the rocker but that wasn't the case. So the noise is still on the right hand side. The right hand side is the cylinder where we replaced one of the valve guides. I checked all the parts, the springs, the valves, the keepers, everything looks the way it's supposed to. And it's still making noise way more than the other side. And we have to find what's going on here. So let's dive in. I'll take the valve cover off. I put you in a better spot so you can see what I'm talking about. And then we're going to uh, open a garage door, run this thing in here while we're looking at the parts and maybe we can identify where the noise is coming from. So let's try this. The uh, contact surfaces of the rockers, they have been um, relapped so they are, they are smooth against the valve. So that shouldn't cause any issues. The valves were adjusted properly and still this side, this side of the engine makes more noise than the other side. And... Uh, as I mentioned, I moved this rocker over to the other side, to the intake side once, just to see if maybe the noise follows the rocker, but that wasn't the case. Um, as you probably all know, when you, when you adjust uh, your valves, you also want to take up any kind of uh, longitudinal play here in the, in the rocker, so you can push those mounting blocks together. And they also have a little bit of some... Uh, movement room um, to adjust for position. In some older BMW manuals you will actually find a tool that you can build or buy, or back in the days at least, uh, to get this all nicely square. And you also need to make sure that your push rods are somewhat in the center of the push rod tube. And um, this one here is not quite where I would like it. This one here looks better. But what we're going to do is I'm going to start up the engine, warm it up so it idles nicely, and then we're going to uh, see if we can maybe, while, while it's running, touching items to eliminate the noise. 
I also want to uh, see with a big flashlight if we can maybe see uh, if the push rods are doing anything inside the push rod tubes. I don't even know if I could potentially see. Yeah, that's not bad. Oh, actually, I might have already found the issue. I think our push rod is touching the push rod tube. So yeah, I think that uh, we might already have found the issue that the push rod is a little close to the, the lower section here of the push rod tube. On the other side, it looks completely different. It's out in the open. Uh, it looks like my rocker needs to just go up slightly. But we're still going to try to run it and identify if this is really the case here. Because uh, with the parts moving, you can touch things a little bit and, and dampen the movement a little bit and see if the noise changes. So let me get the engine started. Let's see how much of a mess we make down here. I have a, a catch can right under here. Or a, a pan, I should say. All right, let's take everything off of my my lift table here because it's probably going to all rattle off. We might even want to um, tie down the motorcycle so it doesn't start moving. Fuel on, choke, start. Uh, neutral, good. <laughs> Yeah, that's weird, huh? It's actually really quiet right now. That is the weirdest thing. It's super quiet. All right, oil is coming out, that's good. So we now, uh, the oil pump is pushing enough oil into the valve train, as you can see the oil coming out. So that is what you want to see. The top bolt here through the cylinder is the delivery for the oil of the valve train. And then your rocker shafts are drilled to deliver oil into the bearings. And yeah, this is a good amount here, this is good. And it's really quiet. This is the weirdest thing. This is confusing me. This is perfectly quiet valve train. Uh, I don't think there's gonna be, yeah, let me turn on some light for you. There's not going to be any quieter airhead valve train, at least not as far as I know. The later models, they used a different version of this rocker, uh, actually had chimps up here. Oh, no, I can hear the tick, tick, tick. I don't know if it's coming out through my microphone here. So I'm using a really long screwdriver holding it against a part and then holding it against my ear.
Oh, killed it. Lots of oil coming out. You can't do that too long because you're going to lose all the engine oil. But for a short moment, you can. Um, I will have to start it up one more time because I haven't really done any noise searching here. Some guys have told me that it's really not that bad, but I hear the difference between this side and the other side. Now I have a mechanic stethoscope here that has a long end on it. All right, slowly we have to cut this off here because it's a lot of oil coming on. Yeah, we better knock it off. So I can hear a tick, tick, tick here on this side, which is not present on the other side. But at the moment, it really doesn't sound all that terrible. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, what I'm going to do is play with the valve adjustment a little bit. Also with the position of the rocker shaft here up and down, there's a little bit of some play because I want the push rods to be as center in the push rod tubes as I can make it. So um, I think for now, since you guys are still here and I already have a wrench ready to go somewhere, I'm gonna take this one rocker loose. I know it's not good practice, especially now that it's a little warm, but um, We're just going to have to play with this a little bit, you know, troubleshooting. So I, I just have this one loose. We still have four bolts holding the cylinder head in place. I just want to be able to move this around and uh, get it where it should be. There's a company in Germany, Israel Motors. They make those mounting blocks here as a one piece that kind of braces from top to bottom. So you take completely this movement out of it. Um, they also sell conversion kits where you can put rockers on here that have the uh, plastic uh, insert plus shims. So you can shim it down to a very small amount of um, longitudinal play, which to get a nice quiet valve train that is really important huh, interesting huh how's this all making a mess here everything is dripping and it's also kind of warm already so airhead since it's an air-cooled engine 
you definitely don't want to run stationary without fans for too long. Oh, hot, hot, hot. So what you can do to eliminate the play, you can use a uh, clamp that you use like in woodworking. Let me grab one, this one here. And then a couple sockets that fit over the end of, of the rocker shaft. Nope, too small. Next one. That one and next size up. And then you put those two sockets on there. Like so. And give it a little bit of a snugging so that you are taking up the play between those two blocks and you have, there's still you can hear it. So a little more, a little more, a little more. And then we can try to massage the position, the kind of this position, so that the push rod is in the middle of the push rod tube. Man, Heiko. Take it loose one more time so we can wiggle a little more. Yeah, I like that. The other side, this one here, looks a little better. Okay, so we have it in place. Barely any play. Now I get my fork wrench out. Let's do 35 Newton meters for now. 20, 30, 35. So we can keep it good. So now I'm going to rotate the engine to top dead center so that I get um, valve flush on both sides. So when we're on the compression stroke, those two rockers are not pushing on the valves. That's when you adjust um, your valve flush. And then I also want to check for the lateral play one more time. But uh, let's do that real quick. So how I put my bike into top dead center is usually I put a jack stand. Here's a cross member under this cross member here. So that just the, the rear wheel is off the ground. And then I take my uh, timing cover off. And then I can um, literally, oh yeah, I put it in third or fourth gear. Then I can reach for my rear wheel and then bump the engine. Sorry, see there's already a mark. F and then here's S and then the next one is OT. So now one of the 
two cylinders is on OT, as you can see. And uh, the way you can tell whether or not this cylinder is on com compression stroke or the other one um, is by wiggling the rockers. So we should have, there's some play, and there's a little bit of play. So this cylinder is for sure on compression stroke. And I'm gonna grab my trusty feeler gauge here. So the numbers I'm gonna give you here is all metric. So the the valve flash on the intake, 0.15 millimeters or 0.1 millimeters. So I, I think on the newer models they went to 0.1. And uh, I still go by 0.15 because a noisy, a noisy valve train is always a healthy valve train. <laughs> At least uh, you are not setting it too tight. Uh, a loose adjusted valve train is always a little bit more clattery. You want to push against the adjuster here and then try to, yeah, this might actually be a little tight. Maybe I actually set it to 0.1. Let's see if 0.1 fits. 0.1, feel a gauge, here's 0.1, yeah, that one. Yeah, this is, is a little on the tight end. I always like to use the same type of feel a gauge in case there is any kind of differences in quality. So it's usually the ones that I'm carrying with me, made by Würth. And I do have all three sizes. I have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1.5, uh, point, yeah, 0 0.15. And that's usually what I adjust my intake valves to, because I'd rather have a little bit more play than not enough. But this one is a little on the tight side. This could be because we have a little bit of some heat in the machine here. This is way too large. So I think, um, so when you do this movement here, you want to see a little bit of some oil squishing going on here. Let's see if I see it here. If you don't see oil squishing out, you don't want to feel any play, but you need to see some oil squishing going on. If that's not the case, you can um, take a brass punch. Where is it? My brass punch. Right here. Take a brass punch and a hammer. And just give one of the two blocks a light tap or you can also go right on the nut and just give him a, a light tap still not give it another no, now i i just created actual play but you can always go back on that take it back So now I can see some oil squish. This is maybe also a little on the tight side. And here's also some oil squishing going on. And now we're just gonna wait until the engine has cooled down so I can do a cold valve adjustment. That's, that's really, really important that you be consistent about this. So you, you don't adjust valves when it's hot. Um, we know that we are in top dead center because both of our rockers have some play and our timing mark is on OT. So now we just have to let this cool down and then I'm going to retorque 
all the the cylinder head bolts even the ones down here and up here so it's one two three four five six in that pattern and uh, you will find a little bit of different torque values so in some manuals it goes to 39 to 40 newton meters in some uh, articles you read that you should use less so I usually start with 15 first round then 25 newton meters and then uh, 35 and then um, if you do a retorque after a few miles you can take it up to like 38 or 39 but uh, just be careful the studs go into aluminum you know you don't want to yank those out and uh, there are a lot of airheads uh, driving around out there that already have uh, repaired threads in the case so just just be gentle on it I would rather go lower and then recheck it a few times than going too high and stripping out a bolt all right guys I will pause you here and uh, we're gonna let this cool down so time has passed engine has cooled down completely and now we are going to do a quick little valve adjustment you need two 12 millimeter wrenches and uh, we still have our feeler gauges here so we're still at top dead center this one here might be a little on the loose end let's check this one more time you know what let's do one more click 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 and come on yeah you definitely want it torqued so that it at least doesn't come loose anymore I guess we need to also torque number five and six here let's do that real quick and that's good and then this one spark plug out As you just saw I don't super tighten my spark plugs I tighten them to be snug and as long as I don't notice any leakages around it because a lot of those cylinder heads they have stripped out uh, spark plug holes spark, spark plug threads then they have torn out cylinder head studs so one two three four five and six so that should do that now we can run the 0.2 millimeter that's a little on the Lucy side so we're gonna there you go You want a little bit of some drag right but you also have to push against the adjuster to take up any slack that's in there and you still have some drag and that's good and then the difficult part is to tighten it without changing the the setting really see now it just moved yeah I think that is still pretty good it's a smidge tighter than it was before and then you definitely want to tighten up the adjuster so it doesn't come loose there's also a torque value but no come on if I have to get the torque wrench out for every single bolt even a valve adjuster so now we're going to take this one loose you can also replace those nuts here over time they wear out I mean valve adjustment is really one of those those things that um, need to needs to get done all the time so we're going to do with a 0.1 I changed my mind I'm going to go with a modern suggestion here so we want I I actually kind of like it 
when they hang down like this. So if I make it too loose, they will fall out and that's kind of a, a good uh, indicator for when you're doing your adjustment here. So let's check. Uh, this is a, yeah, it's a loose 0.1 millimeter, which is, I guess it's good. So that's tight. And let's check one more time. Yeah, that's a pretty loose point one now. Pretty, pretty loose point one. Maybe we do that a little, make that a little tighter. Now it's a tight point one. Now it's a pretty tight one, point one. Yeah, you definitely don't want to overdo it. Rather have it too loose than too tight. That's, you know, a noisy valve train. It's, it's annoying, but it's not going to damage anything. If you have it too loose, uh, if you have it, oh, this is too loose now. If you have it too tight, you, um, you can actually bend pieces and cause damage. Not that easy. Pretty tight. Too loose. Too loose. Too tight. Oh my goodness gracious. This is good now, so let's make sure we tighten this up and we, <clears throat> yeah, that's good, that's good. All right, so that's that. Let me put some extra oil in the engine real quick and then we're gonna do one last run. So I just added a um, quart of engine oil because we we didn't quite lose a quart but we're going to lose a little more here while running it again i want to see if my adjustment to the rocker position as well as the valve adjustment did anything or anything uh, noteworthy to the clickety clacky noise that's coming from somewhere here and i can't identify it and i think it was the um, push rod touching the inside of the push rod tube, which is very possible. So spark plug, snug. There we go. All right, try this again. We have fuel still on, choke all the way. We are not in neutral. We better fix that because we, we were turning the engine over by hand which I always do, now come on, neutral. Oh, here we go, so neutral. Um, I think we can maybe take it off that jack stand so our bike doesn't tip over accidentally. All right, we're still neutral. We have the choke on and fuel on, and here we go. And there it goes. And it's really quiet right now. And I feel like it always starts clacking once the engine gets warm. So it's really quiet, super quiet. I don't hear any, anything. Oil is not coming yet.
Very quiet. Very, very quiet. And there's the oil coming, that's good, on both sides. It's really quiet. I just hope it doesn't start, start that again. Very good. Very good. So cold, I just took the choke off. And there's the ticking again. There is still the ticking, and I still don't know what it is. It really bugs me. All right, guys. Can't always have everything, right? You win some, you lose some. The next time, the next time I uh, feel like working on it, I'm going to yank this all back apart. I will find what's going on in here. If I missed. A, a loose valve guide, I'm not sure, or something else. I mean, all the parts in here were just beautiful, no problems. I, I really have no idea. The, the push rod is like right in the middle of push rod tube, and I can literally look down all the way, and I see that the push rod is not touching anything. Yeah, I have no idea. There's something ticking on this side and it doesn't even sound like it's coming from the rockers. If you guys have any idea what else could be causing this noise, um, if you suggest maybe a loose valve seat, I inspected those. They were perfectly fine, fully seated, nothing loose. Um, yeah, valve guides, they were snug in there and uh, the axial play of the valve wasn't out of spec either so and like i said the bearings in here are new and the, the uh, push rod shafts are new as well so i really have no idea what the story is here it doesn't sound like it's the valve train that's the frustrating part and everything else piston we, I put new piston rings in there. Uh, I checked the play of the uh, wrist pin inside the connecting rod. There was no problem. I also uh, checked the end play of the, the large bearing on the connecting rod on the crank. There was nothing to report. And then also the, the cam followers. But it really sounds like it's up here. And I just have no idea what the clickety-clacking is. It doesn't do that on the other side. That's the frustrating part. I can't put my finger on it, what it is. If I just ignore it and just keep riding it this way, or if I go all nuts and take the heads off again. I don't know. You guys tell me. Please, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave your comments down below. What do you think I should do? Clickety-clacking, which doesn't sound like it's coming from here. It's... Sounds like it's more internal. So, yeah, let me, let me know. I would appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Bye.
Alrighty guys, I want to leave a quick little addendum here for you. I took the bike out for a, a little bit longer ride, about an hour, 40 miles or so we made. Um, and halfway through, I stopped one more time and stuck my ear down there um, next to the cylinder heads. And I realized the noise is gone. So um, I don't know, maybe uh, I'm just too picky. Uh, but yeah, once the engine is really good and warm, and at uh, operating temperature, the cylinders are fine. They're quiet. There's nothing going on. So maybe it's all in my head. But uh, at least we uh, did a little bit of some troubleshooting together. Uh, I showed you a way that you can run an engine um, and you can actually look at the moving parts. You know, remember back in the days, uh, big old engines in like... Uh, submarines german submarines uh they had an open valve train and someone would run around with an oil can and and lubricate the, the valve train so you can open that up and just look at things and and touch things while it's running and maybe find the culprit we didn't uh, maybe my valve adjustment this time was a little bit more thorough than the other times but yeah uh, riding it on the street with my wife um, as a passenger on it up the mountains and we stopped and I did some listening and there was no valve train, no, nothing significant at least. So I think I'm just being too picky and I just need to leave it alone now for a while at least. Uh, thanks for watching again and uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for uh, being with my channel. Please give me a thumbs up if you like and uh, subscribe to my channel and I will create more content for you guys. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.